Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video we're going to continue thinking about how we model categorical dependent variables or uh, binary dependent variables, the, out the outcome variables. And uh, what we're going to be doing in this is extending uh, into logit and probit models coming from our linear, um, linear probability model. So as we mentioned in the last last video, we have this problem with linear probability models where it's possible that um, we could have predicted probabilities outside the range of 0 to 1. So we have this unboundedness problem. So we're going to be solving the unboundedness problem with the logit model or probit model. Um, we're going to talk about that here. So uh, let's write down just a little, a uh, little bit about what we're doing here. So instead of modeling the probability directly, which we were doing before, instead of modeling the probability directly, right, which we were modeling as <clears throat> di, the probability of some outcome occurring, we model the odds of a successful outcome. We model the odds of a successful outcome. Okay, so we're going to be modeling the odds of di being equal to 1. And the way we think about that is the odds of something happening is the probability of it happening divided by the probability of it not happening. And when we take the log of those odds, that's going to give us our logit model. So binary logit, we often just kind of simplify that and just call it logit. Um, so by taking the log of the odds, Taking the log odds leads to the standard logit model. Leads to the standard logit model. Okay, and what we have there is the log of the odds of success or the odds of a 1 in general. Uh, is going to be equal to some set of independent variables. Let's just add let's just add two into there. Okay, so this formula is what we're going to be estimating when we calculate our logit model. And just to just to maybe give a little uh, example to this odds bit is let's say that we wanted to model um, what factors lead to somebody uh, retiring. And so if you had 100 people, if you had 100 people, and one means you're retired, zero means you're not, and let's say you had 20 people who were retired in your sample and 80 people who were not, then you're going to have 20 over 80 di yeah um, for 25 percent okay so um, anyway that's how we're going to be calculating our log odds and that ultimately we'll just do in the software um, and then Let's talk about how this helps remove our unboundedness problem. All right, just like we did with the linear probability model, let's uh, draw what this is going to look like on a graph, and that's going to help us think about the, the boundedness of a logit distribution. So how does this... 
solve or remove the unboundedness problem. Well, if we do a little bit of math, if um, di is equal to 1, then the log of di over di minus 1 is going to be equal to the log of 1 over 0. Okay, um, we can't do that, but if we think about what that would approach if we weren't dividing by a 0 but something extremely, extremely small, that's going to be close to infinity. And if di is equal to 0, so the outcome is 0 instead of 1, the log of di, which is 0, over 0 mi di minus 1, which is 0 minus 1, it's going to be 0 over negative 1 for log of 0, and that's also going to be approximately negative infinity. And so if we draw that on a graph, So let's say that's 0, this is 1, and this could be, say, for example, again, whether or not somebody is retired, and maybe this is their age, as we did before, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay, and if we... If we build this, so remember previously, our our linear probability model, we had a whole, well, we had a whole bunch of people here who were not retired, um, and then as you start hitting 60, 65, there are going to be some people who are still not retired, um, but most people are by that age. So there's going to be a whole bunch of observations up here of people who are retired, maybe a few early retirees here. Okay, um, and that linear probability model, that gave us this beforehand, which allowed for the possibility of probabilities outside, say, 115%. That's impossible. Negative 10%, that's also impossible. But what the linear, or what the logit model does is if we had, uh, you know, extremely low levels on age, it's going to approach zero, closer and closer to zero, and then as we get toward the top ages, it's going to get closer and closer to one. And then this is going to give us our logit distribution and the associated prob probabilities. So it's going to be impossible for anybody to have uh, lower than zero or higher than one. This is bounded by 0 and 1. Okay, um, so that's going to work very much in our favor. Um, and so let's, uh, let's just summarize that in a little bit of text here. We have the logit model this, uh, the estimated outcome estimated or let's say also predicted outcome which is our estimation of di or our prediction of di di hat is bounded by 0 and 1 and the other nice feature is that uh, many real-world data follow a similar S-shaped pattern. Many real-world data follow a similar S-shaped pattern. Okay, um, 
So I'll just add, I'll just maybe mention, maybe without writing, a couple other technical notes. So, uh, Logit, because it's, because it's nonlinear, this is not, uh, and similar models, so we're going to talk about Probit here in a second, um, but these cannot be estimated with OLS. So instead, there's a separate technique that's used that's called maximum likelihood estimation. Um, we're not going to go into the details of that right now in this set of video lectures, uh, but it's just a different estimation technique. Um, and in practice, it's really easy to implement in any sort of statistical software, R, or Python, or so on and so forth. So, um, but this is where it does start to reach the limits of what's possible in Excel. And so that's why um, once you start moving to these sorts of outcomes, you say you could do a linear uh, probability model in Excel, uh, but you're not going to easily be able to do um, a logit model. So if you want to if you want to model categorical outcomes, uh, you're going to have to start moving toward other um, softwares. Okay, and so finally, we're just going to wrap up really briefly. Um, I won't get into too many, many details here uh, because the probit model is going to be very similar to the logit model and then I'll just really quickly discuss multinomial where our y could take on a variety of outcomes say you know red green or blue um, or high medium or low and this we would be using as an outcome, not as an independent variable. Uh, or it could be all sorts of categories, a scale of 1 all the way up to 10. Um, if you're looking at maybe some sort of, uh, you want to model customer satisfaction on a scale of 1 to 10, you could use a continuous OLS model, but if the categories, especially if they're not ordered, um, or there might be there might be non-continuous differences between them, then you would want to use uh, a multinomial model. So real quick, we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail on these ones, um, but let's just write down a few a few ideas. So binomial probit that's again going to be a zero one. This is similar to logit, But instead of using the logistic distribution to model log odds, probit, probit uses the cumulative normal distribution. So similar to logit, but instead of using the logistic distribution, instead of using the logistic distribution, Probit uses the cumulative normal distribution. Uses the cumulative normal distribution to model log odds. Okay, and Ultimately, because these uh, distributions are pretty similar, the results are also largely similar. And if you were to do a probit model, that would also be taking on a similar S-shaped um, S-shaped curve. Okay, um, so we're not going to get into the, the weeds on this one. Um, or the next one, but just sort of introducing that these exist. So, finally, the multinomial logit or probit, again, could be the logistic or the normal distribution, um, but what we're doing here is modeling dependent variables with more than two categories. Modeling dependent variables with more than two categories. All right, and I'll just provide a couple examples and then 
that's going to do it. That's going to do it for us. Okay, so um, let's say we wanted to measure something like the employment sector. in which somebody works as a function of, say, their education, uh, how many degrees they have, what field they studied in, um, their location, etc., so on and so forth. Well, the employment sector, that's our y variable, That those sectors could be at all sorts of possible options. They exist within the set, that's what this uh, means. You could work in the private sector, you could work in education, you could work for the government, um, so on and so forth. So that's one example. Um, maybe a more common one in a business setting would be a product choice. And this might be some function of prices, um, individuals' income, so on and so forth. You want to model the product choice, and as I was saying above, you might model this as whether or not somebody buys a small, medium, or large size uh, good, whether it's food or clothes or whatever. You could model what kind of choice people prefer from different colors, uh, blue, red, green, yellow, so on and so forth, um, to, see, to see what people like there. And a common, say, transportation economics is commuting choice. And so you might model that as a function of several things. Gas prices, income, distance to work, so on and so forth. And you can model that choice as whether somebody drives, um, bike, walk, public transport, Um, and maybe some other possibilities there, but but you could use a multinomial logit to see to try to model how people behave on their commute to work, for example. <clears throat> and so um, that's actually where we're going to leave it off here. I'll just say if you want to read more about multinomial um, or really all all sorts of these econometric models, um, the UCLA statistics website. If you type in the name of a model and you add, include that, these have a lot of really great information on what the models mean, how do you think about them, how do you interpret them, um, and so on and so forth. So that's just an extra nice resource um, that you could use to learn more. Okay, but otherwise, that's going to do it. That's, that's how we model these uh, binary, one zero, or multinomial a, A, B, C, um, dependent variables as some function of various X variables. And hopefully that helped. Um, this is a, a very common and practical uh, set of tools that are used in a lot of academic research, a lot of business settings. And so learning a little bit about these um, dependent outcome variables is going to be really helpful. So thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.